for joining us. I just want to say it's a pleasure to have our guest on, Tommy Green, Phil, former Philadelphia Phillies pitcher. Tommy, thank you so much for joining us, man. Hey, glad to be on. So, Tommy, we have Phillies alumni weekend coming up, and, we're, you know, the, the Authentic Expo, we're bringing in a good amount of your former teammates, a lot, a lot of players from the 1993 National League champion Philadelphia Phillies. What's it going to be like for you to kind of join all your old teammates? Well, I tell you, I mean, anytime you get a chance to get together, that, that crazy bunch of guys, it, bring, it makes it makes you makes you younger, makes you feel younger at least, uh, you know, because we're all we're all not getting any younger. We're all getting older. You know, it's been thirty years now since we played together. So, you know, it's going to be a great time to see possibly some of the guys I haven't seen in that amount of time, you know, uh, or sparingly. You know, I do get a chance to see them, uh, a lot of these guys uh, off this team uh, periodically, you know, because we, a lot of us go to uh, fantasy camp. So we get a chance to spend at least, you know, that time with each other a year. So, I mean, it's all, and it's like we've never missed a beat too. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's one of those type of things. You just fall right back into it, right? Yeah. That's, how, that's yeah. how close you guys were. Anytime you get around a ballpark and a clubhouse and, and, uh, you know, like down in fantasy camp, you know, it brings back the old times, the old memories a little bit. And nobody wants to leave the clubhouse, you know, as we, we stay later. And, you know, even though we got stuff to do in the evening in fantasy camp, you know, we all tend to, to, to stay afterwards and enjoy it. You know? That's awesome. Speaking of old memories, I mean, what were some of your favorite memories of that 93 team playing with those guys? Is there one moment that kind of stuck out throughout the course of the season? It might not be obviously, you know, the biggest game, but was there one moment that kind of stuck out to you that you remember and you kind of cherished with some of those guys? Uh, I mean, I mean, there's so many different things uh, off that year that, uh, um, you know, from what we played on the field and then, uh, you know, what you really remember is off the field in the clubhouse or in the training room at night when it was just us and nobody else was allowed. There weren't no reporters or, you know, or any, anybody allowed, uh, allowed in there. So, you know, it was our time and we got a chance to discuss, you know, a lot of different things, you know, uh, baseball, life, and you know, and, uh, and that, I think that's where our roots are, you know, of that club that year were, was bonded you know, was in the training room and it started in spring training. It was that type of thing, you know, in spring training, it started with that, you know, and then on the field, you know, one of the probably the big instances was, you know, it started in spring training was, uh, you know, when we got in a, a little bit of a brouhaha with the Cardinals in spring training a little bit, and it kind of brought us together, I think with, because we had some new guys on the squad and, you know, and, but they were guys that, that fit in like a puzzle, man. They fit right in there and joined in and, um, we had a good mix of uh, veteran and young guys and, you know, guys that knew how to play the game the right way. And that's, you know, that's where it started at spring training, the cohesiveness uh, come together uh, there. And, uh, and, that, and that's when we knew we had, you know, we had a chance uh, uh, to do something special because it started you know, with the, in the clubhouse there. Yeah. I, I was going to ask you, do you think that the, the bond that you guys formed in that team and how, how cohesive you were. Do you think that is why it translates so well into why this team is one of Philadelphia's legendary sports teams and why that's so beloved by this fan base? Well, I mean, I think that's, I mean, it's sort of the roots of Philadelphia, the, uh, a little bit like that, uh, the cohesiveness of the community, uh, you know, of your neighborhoods you have in, in different, you know, uh, Northeast Philly, South Philly, you know, you know, or wherever. Um, you know, everybody is proud and stuff of where they come from. And, uh, and that's sort of like us. We were, we were proud. We, I mean, were we necessarily on paper the best? No, but we had the capability to do it and we knew we did. And it's all about going out there and do the job. Anybody can be de beaten, you know, you know, in a series. So, I mean, we were, I mean, it's people talk about it today. I'm in the media and do different things. And everybody wants to know they, I mean, they're counting the chickens before they hatch a little bit all the time, you know, well, it's on paper really. I mean, that don't mean Jack. Yeah. I mean, it really doesn't. You know, so, I mean, it's who gets hot at the right time. They're all big league ball players. We were big league ball players with the capability. We wouldn't have been there if we didn't have the ability. You know, it's all about the consistency. And we found that consistency uh, playing wise. And, and for the most part, we, we didn't have any major injuries, you know, that really cost us, you know, um, we got lucky. I got lucky. I missed some starts with a pool growing, which, you know, I mean, it cost, it, it cost me a little bit, but 
it was just it wasn't like we had a couple or a couple of your big hitters or something like that or or your big relievers go down or, or starters or anything like that that you were having to do a makeshift thing trying to find you know that consistency but we didn't have that you know that problem so we had we had a pretty good run at it you know for our health wise and we were able to uh, you know, our offense showed, you know, I mean, those guys knew how to score runs. They knew how to manufacture runs and they played the game the right way. And that's what the fan, um, that's what the fans endeared to was the way we played the game or, you know, the way, you know, the everyday players they played, they were hard, hard nosed, dirty, to get, you know, they want one of these look at me type teams, you know, where, you know, you, you get your uniform dirty, you know, you, you, you know, they didn't want to, you know, they didn't want to do that. We, we didn't do it. We were right. When we come into clubhouse, it was like, if you want dirty, something was wrong. You know, I mean, <laughs> you weren't working hard enough, right? Yeah. It was that type of thing, you know, and as a pitcher, it was the same way. I wanted to be dirty. You know, I wanted, I mean, back then we, we hit, I wanted to be part of it. I wanted to bunt and get guys over and, and possibly get on base. That means some things was going the right way. I was turning the lineup over and stuff like that. You know, I mean, the positive things. I mean, so, it's about playing the game to baseball, uh, baseball right, the right way. And, and, you know, we had a bunch of core leaders that did that, that, in, you know, that instilled that into the young guys too. We got, we had a lot of good, a lot of good guys on that team. Honestly, I, I was just thinking this past week and I was watching Fred McGriff get inducted to the hall of fame and what the a thing classy, is he's what awesome a classy, guy. guy. And, and yeah. did you see, did you see the speech, Tommy? No, I did not. No, I didn't. No, he, he did a great job, but he had said that when he came over in 1993, that was the best team that he had ever played on. And I was thinking about this here. It's like, obviously there's four guys uh, on that team position wise with McGriff and the three pitchers that are in the hall of fame and Bobby Cox. But you look at the superstars, Terry Pendleton was a reigning MVP, I believe. And David justice was a rookie of the year. And it was a damn good team. And they won in 95. I come up with all those guys. Yeah. Sure. And they won in 95, but the fact that he said that the 93 team was better, and I just looked at it, it's like it gave me such pride as a Phillies fan that it's like we beat those guys. They didn't want nothing to do with us, I don't think. <laughs> we matched up pretty well. We played them pretty pretty, pretty good straight up, you know, I mean, for head to head. And uh, and that's what it comes down to who's hot at the right time. They pitched well. We come in, we 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 manufactured runs. You know, we had a couple games where we gave it up. But the other time, as far as the pitchers wise, and they beat us. You know, big, big scores. But the rest of the time, we didn't really we didn't give it up, and we beat them, you know. So, so I mean, it was that type of thing. So, we matched up pretty decent, you know, uh, against them, you know, as far as, you know, pitching staff and stuff like that. You know, they got Hall of Famers and stuff like that, but we were capable of doing the same thing they were. So, no, and that's, that's kind of one of those – and that's got to be one of those things looking back, that, like looking at who you beat to get there and looking at how competitive you were also against the Blue Jays. I think if we go to game seven, I think you guys win no question about it to this day because you guys would have outworked and outhit everyone. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I think everybody sort of believed that, but I think, uh, you know, I look back at it personally and look at it. We were ahead in every ball game. We had our opportunities, you know, to win it. And uh, we just let, I mean, it just didn't happen. It wasn't in our cards to do it. It wasn't because of lack of effort. You know, or anything like that. It was just just the way it was. Sometimes you have to tip your hat off to the other team, you know, because they didn't give up either. You know what I mean? And 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 they kept striving. They could have been easily to throw in the towel a little bit, uh, you know, in that high scoring game, you know, game four, you know, because we were head up so much, but they didn't, you know. And you got to take you give credit where credits due. Sometimes you know they never gave up and. And they challenged us to, to to be better, and and at the end they got the better of us, you know. But if Game Seven would have come around, it been that's what you live for is the chance, opportunity to play in a Game Seven, and you know you love to do it in four games, but you know, but seven games is good too. But uh, that's just the way it was, you know. I mean, yeah, you know, we got to where we wanted to get to. The only thing we didn't get done is winning. So yeah, pe people were dear to us a little bit because of what we did, you know. We wanted to. We went to guys that wore slacks and, you know, collared shirts and stuff like that. And, you know, we drank beer and then had a good time. And we stayed out. We stayed up late and talked to I mean, in the clubhouse a lot when we were at home. And we went out and did things and uh, on the road a little bit. And, you know, we had a good time. And I think it rubbed off on the on the uh, on the people a little bit. They they endeared because that's what they did, you know. And, and we were like, we we uh, I think the epitome of it. What, what did the Atlanta Constitution say when we got there? 
I got in the NLCS is when we went to Atlanta. It says women and children off the streets, the Phillies are in town, you know, or that type of thing. It was the epitome, you know, of who we were, you know. It was a, we were a bunch of it was like we were, you know, a bunch of you know throwbacks and you know crazy guys, and you know we just had fun, you know, and and, and there was never a dull moment, you know, uh, in that clubhouse and and the, and the, and really the the way we play, we played fun baseball. Uh, but we played hard nose baseball, and that's the way a lot of guys on that team. I mean, not all the guys on that team, but especially the veterans that dared. I mean, for us young guys to uh, to play, and one in particular, always I'm, I'm trying to give him more of a shout out because you hear about Dutch and Krupke and you know and Dude all the time, but I tell you, he played with a passion who meant a, who meant a lot and was a winner, and had won before he got there was Mariano Duncan. And he played the game the right way, and he expected you to play that way too, you know, and and the emotion and the fire, you know, and he'd hold you accountable for it. And that's, that's great. I mean, that was one of the great things, you know, but we had, he was one of those that had a lot of fun at playing too. He had a lot, there was a lot of smiles and a lot of things, but when it come down to playing the game of baseball, he played it hard and he played it the right way. And he expected you to do the same thing. You came from down South. You were born in North Carolina, right? Uh, played and drafted by you know the Atlanta Braves. Now, when you come to Philadelphia, what? How has that changed for you coming from down south to coming to a, a you know to Philadelphia? What was that like? The culture? How, did you dive right into the culture? And you know, how, how did did it take some adjustment time getting used to the way things worked in Philadelphia? Well, I mean, I'll say that I wasn't a city guy, so I didn't ever really mess around inside like downtown or anything like that or. You know, I was more of an outskirts guy. I like my trees and, you know, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. But, uh, you know, what I do like, I like about the city of Philadelphia and the people are the way they go, the way they love their sports teams and the way the knowledge of the fans, you know, about their about their teams and, and the sports. Uh, they expect you to play a certain way and go about your business a certain way. And, uh, and that's the way I grew up. Um, I mean, as far as you take pride in what you do, and if you don't hustle, you're going to get called out for it. And you and somebody's going to let you know about it. And that's the way I grew up. Uh, I grew up with guys older than me and uh, in the neighborhood. So, I mean, I was, in my little little neighborhood I grew up in, but I still was sort of like growing up in a neighborhood of big, you know, here in Northeast Philly. You're still playing the same game in football, basketball, and baseball, and that type of thing. You're going to get called out, you know, if you don't play the right way or you don't play, you know, bottom line. And, uh, so it wasn't a hard transition as far as that's concerned to me because, you know, John Kruk uh, was one when he did his Wall of Fame speech. You know, he says a lot of guys don't want to come here because they don't like uh, the way the fans, you know, and stuff. They, and the only things that fans, the fans do, they hold you accountable. Some people don't like to be held accountable and being talked to or, or let, let know they're not doing what they're supposed to do, you know. So, and, that, and to me, that's a self-check, you know. I take pride in myself and, you know, and you got to be able to, I think as a human being and as an athlete, you got to be able to take constructive criticism because you are not, you know, you can always be better. And, uh, and you got to be willing to be open a little bit and, and can take and, and take that uh, criticism because you are human you know, you're not perfect. And, and you got to work to, to be better in every facet, mentally, physically, you know, they might be, t they might be getting on you. Might be because your physical ability could be because your mental side of it is not where it needs to be. And it can show up in your play. Um, you're not thinking ahead. You don't, not where you're supposed to be. You're not, you know, uh, not anticipating like you're supposed to be and you know, or you're not acting like you're supposed to be off the field. You know, it's, it's all part of it, you know? So that's one of the things, uh, you know, I really like, you know, about the city of Philadelphia and their fans, they, 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 they're into every facet of the game and they want you to do, they want you to be their athlete and, and play the game their way. And they're going to let you know. Now, Tommy, any the biggest accomplishment for any pitcher is obviously pitching a no hitter and you were able to pitch a no hitter in 1991 season. Tell me about that game and, and kind of what sticks out to you about that game. And, and, and how do you remember as it's going through, do you think about I'm um, pitching a no hitter? Do you try and block that out? What's your mental thought process going through that game? I, I mean, it's it's to me. I looked at that game. I mean, the way it happened it, at the end, it was a no hitter, but it was also a one nothing game to the ninth. And I was pitching a getaway day in Montreal, so the way I looked at it, I was trying to get them before they woke up good, you know, because it was like a twelve oh five game or something like that in Montreal. 
Um, but, uh, you know, it was about winning the ball game. Yeah. And, you know, it, uh, it was a special day. Um, it didn't seem like there was really any tough plays made. You know, it was a couple, they tried to bunt a couple times, but it wasn't one of those coming in and like busting your tail. It was just a routine, you know, bunt play. The guy had time to set his feet and throw him out at first because we're playing on turf. You had to be a pretty good bunt. You know, uh, the Shields tried to bump once. I, I can't, I think somebody else tried to, but uh, there really wasn't that many. Uh, uh, I mean, for there weren't no diving plays, there weren't no, uh, you know, like line drives in the gap where anybody had a layout. I mean, for as layout for one or running, I mean, get that far as more routine fly balls and and ground balls at people. And I, and I struck out uh, quite a few guys, and, and uh, but it come down that day was you know, I thought about you know, was uh. You know, with the two outs in the ninth was Leo Mazzoni before I walked up to back in the mound. And the backstory of that a little bit, because because I come up through the Braves organization, he was my pitching coach through the minor leagues. And um, I had three no hitters throughout the minor leagues, uh, A ball, double A, triple A, where I had two outs, two strikes on the last batter and lost all three of them, gave up the hit. And, um, Two off, one off a shattered bat, and one just a just a like a five hopper through the hole. It just hit it with no man's land, and the other one was uh, probably a one handed uh, an a ball, one handed like a one handed a ball about eight inches off the plate outside with two strikes in. There was a you know a guy just reached out with his one hand, he got his, had his left hand on the bat and hit it right on the screws right by me. Yes, <laughs> what the guy? And what that I can do? You know, it was one of those type things. So, but, uh, and, uh, and I, and I thought about Leo because my last one I threw in triple A, he, I got on the, you know, bus, and, you know, I mean, or whenever he talked to me, he says, when are you going to finish one of these bleeping things off? You know, you can hear Leo talking like that too. He looked like the Yosemite Sam. I called him the Tasmanian devil, you know, because he had, he, he had to, you know, he had that attitude a little bit, you know, he challenged me. He would challenge me all the time, which was great. It's what I needed. And uh, so I thought about him, you know, when I got the ball back after the second out, I said, I, I started walking up the back of my hand. I said, this one's for you, you little bleep and bleep, you know. And uh, I said, and I told myself, I said, I am not going two strikes on on on, uh, on Tim Wallet. And I said, we're going to get it over quick. He, he, the only way I'm going two strikes is he fouls off two pitches. I threw the first pitch. I mean, I went right at him and he hit the ground ball back to me. And that's the way it ended. So, yeah, ended ended with you getting the ball, throwing it to to first, and and completely. Yeah, and people ask me, was that the biggest game? Like you, as far as I mean, you know, yeah, that's that's a huge game in your career. Um, I mean, but but you know, but making it to the playoffs back then, we were the last team to before the wild card. You had to you had to win to get in. You know, you had to have a full season worth of success to get in. You know, and to be a part of that. That's a huge huge thing um you know but and the other thing that meant to me is uh uh an important game uh is you know five days later uh was uh after the no hitter was i pitched against montreal again at home five days later and faced them again and threw a three-hit shutout against them and didn't walk anybody so that same lineup got another four looks four looks at me didn't really do nothing either. Do nothing, right? <laughs> yeah. well i look at that you know and they were chirping a little bit, a couple guys, and you know, and be careful what you you know wish for, you know, a little bit. Yeah, you know? I mean that to me that that was a real. I mean that was a, like a real you know important game. A val, it's call it a sort of a validation game. You know, <laughs> stamp stamp of approval. You there know? you go. Yeah. And, you know, coming up in that big fish small pond. You know, you know, I I wish I had that that guy that kind of helped me with the off speed stuff. I, I kind of come in a little more polished out of high school. Because I had power, you know, and I had pretty decent command of the fastball, you know, right off the bat, you know. But, you know, I've seen guys come in, you know, like your Steve Avery's and stuff come in. And, you know, I mean, those guys you know, got with him. It's like he told me, see, I had, had some people that were real influential with me. I never had that pitcher type help, you know, with me. I played the game of baseball. You know, I had a good coach. But he wasn't a pitcher, you know. He was a, a player that understood how to play game, and he gave me good advice as far as pitching wise. You know, you know how to how to treat. You know, we talked about pitching and stuff like that. You know, changing locations and stuff, and you know, but first teaching me a breaking ball or a type of shorter breaking ball or a changeup or anything like that. We didn't, 
you know, he says, until, until they show you they can handle what you're doing with your fastball, why deviate? Just change location, you know? And that's the way I did a lot of things, you know, uh, in high school. I changed location, and, you know, if a guy was tra- starting to time me a little bit, I'd come up and in more, you know, make him think about it and make him say, hey, let him see it a little better. And the only way he's going to hurt me is if he gets the head out and he cheats that much. You know, and I wasn't trying to mess. I mean, I wanted him to see it inside, and then, and then I could locate it down and away. You know, I mean, he start bailing to try to get to me. I could hit. I'd go down away, and he couldn't do nothing with him. He was he'd miss it. You know, or yeah. you know, it's hard to handle that when you're having to cheat. You know, especially with guys. You know, when you're throwing mid upper nineties in high school. So, yeah. Now MLB has implemented some changes this year with obviously the pitch clock. Um, do you hate it? You hate it? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, do you think that that would have, uh, you know, flow would that fly back in the day or how would you guys have handled that? Well, I say, I mean, I hate it for some of the guys, um, the pitch clock because people, people are human beings and, and they work a little different, you know? Uh, some guys are, are more methodical in what they go about their business. That's the way they operate. And that's what makes them good at what they do. Um, um, I know as a pitcher, not that I tried to rush things, but you know, when things got, out of control or was going bad. People started running. I tended to get a little bit slower, mm-hmm. but that's what we worked on in the minor leagues a little bit. Hey, get back up on the mound and reinforce the positives. Get and you know, so I tended to try to work quicker anyway, um, because when I did when 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 everything was going hunky dory, it wasn't they weren't waiting on me out there. You know, I was a I was doing I was back up on the mound. Getting ready to do it. it was hitter stepping out of the box. You know, that's what the implemented, you know, has changed a little bit, which is, I mean, to me, it's part of baseball. It's the cat and mouse game, you know, a little bit. You're trying to get in each other's head a little bit. It's the mental side of it, you know, and the, the, what I re- and the one I really hate the, don't, don't, or really dislike is the pick off to first base. You know, you're not allowed but two things. It's, it's, it's another cat and mouse game a little bit because speed kills. You know, and you got, yeah. and they're trying to make guys run more, you know, with the, with the bases and stuff like that. And I think it's happening, you know, so you got to be able to keep them fair, you know, or, I mean, or you're, you know, you're making an advantage so much for the offensive side of things, you know? Um, I mean, that's just, I, I don't get a lot of things, you know? So, I mean, and a lot of people like the uh, ghost man or whatever you call it on second and during the extra innings. And I really hate that because that, to me, you got to start, to me, you got you're doing stuff now with the game. You just yeah. got to have another set. It's just like they talked about the steroid issue and putting asterisks behind beside you. Know, you got to start put make another set, another book. You know, yeah. with yeah, you because know, you changed the game. Yeah, it's, it's changing the fundamentals of the game. I feel like you know. Yeah. I so agree. I mean, changing the game, doing that, and, and I mean, it's going to change the numbers. Going to skew stuff. Uh, you know, and they always talk about the numbers. You know, I'm, I'm like, bottom line to me. When I pitched and stuff like that, if, you know, did I get the win? That didn't bother me or not. Did my team win the day I pitched? That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. We we won the day I pitched. You know, and we you know, and that was one of the best compliments I ever got. Did you know? It was just like some some guys come up. They said, "We want you on the mound, no matter if you're because I fought injury a lot." He says, "Whenever you throw your glove on the mound, we tend to win." You know. And I mean, whether it's a good luck charm or I had something to do with it too, you know, not just pitching, but, you know, I played the game of baseball. That's why I love National League basket, uh, baseball. You know, it's, uh, the pitcher's involved and it makes the manager be involved. I mean, not that he's not already, but uh, more involved than making a decision when to get, you know, he has to change that pitcher out or does he let his pitcher hit or can he bunt? You know, can he move runners over? Because he can't nobody bunt no more. You know, it's unbelievable. You know, Okay, I don't fathom that. You know, I watched a game last night, and I was—I don't cuss at the TV a lot, but I was cussing then. You know, when you see somebody can't get a big league player, can't even get the bunt down, still jabbing at the ball. You know, and, and I mean, it's it's unbelievable. You know, that was our job to bunt. You know, I mean, I, and it's pitchers, and they get on us saying we're non athletes, and I, that's a load of crap. You know. That's the way I look at it. I took pride in mine. I wanted them to think I was just a pitcher. You'd yeah, be back yeah. in third. <laughs> You'd be back in the third. That's the way I looked at it. You're too big to be just a pitcher, man. I've stood next to you before, you know. <laughs> I felt like I could handle the bag. I could hurt you. 
I won some games for my, you know, help win some games for myself a little bit, you know, and, and some of the best compliments you ever get when a pitcher's coming up to plate and you hear in the dugout behind him, treat him as a hitter. He can swing it. He can swing it. I remember you pinch hitting a few times too. You, you, you were you were definitely a, you were definitely one of our better hitters. Well, I had a, I was a threat, you know, and and I mean I could do things. It's just like anything. You go through times hitting where you scuffle, and you don't see the ball good, you know. Um, but I always felt like I saw the ball good, you know. Back in my eyes are not as good as they used to. Cause I'm, I'm older now, I'm old now, you know. <laughs> but uh, I felt like I saw the ball pretty good. You, know? I mean, as pitch recognition, I mean as as hitters, you're looking to pick up spin, you know, and you're looking to pick up spin other other than fastballs, really what you're looking to, you know, to pick up. If it's anything other than a fastball, you know it's a little slower, so you got to keep your hands back, you know. You're still going through your same thing. You're geared to hit the fastball. You're geared to hit it, but you're trying to pick up your all your motion and everything is geared to hit it. And also, I mean, you're just trying to see that ball just to see if it's something a little different, you know, and, and, that's, and that's the way it's recognition. And that's where Barry Bonds and Gwen and all those guys, you know, they did very well at that pitch recognitions. And I mean, and and they had to, they had that great hand hand speed, they had quick hands and and stuff like that. So they did things. Uh, you know, you had to tip your hat to them sometimes. I mean, because it's, it's a hard game to hit a round ball with a round bat, and they made it look pretty easy at times. Okay. You know? <laughs> Yeah. Is there uh, one last thing? What, what do you want to say to the people of Philadelphia? Well, it's like I always do when I get a chance to be out in, in public and do things. It's like say, I'm it's so proud to be a part of the community up here now and to be a part of the Philadelphia, Philadelphia fan base because I pull for the fans too. I just got I got lucky to play, and it's good to meet good people who care about the sport, and that's what I care about is, you know, the fans like that. They come out and want to meet us and, you know, who used to play and, and 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 at least we can do is be is be cordial and and uh, and I look forward to it because you meet new people and new friends that way. So that's excellent. Well, uh, thank you so much for joining us, Tommy. All right, man, you got it. All right, thank you. Thanks again, Tommy. Really appreciate it. Looking forward to seeing you and give my best to uh, to Wendy and Seth. I uh, sure will, man. I'm fixing to go get in the pool. There you enjoy. Go. Thanks. Thank you so hot much, tub. buddy. Hot tub. We're hot tub. Hot tub. Hot tub. Nice. Yeah.